and world news tonight. Suicide attacks. A powerful blast triggered by a suicide bomber kills dozens at a rally in Pakistan. Defiant Trump. Former US President Donald Trump takes aim at Biden. DeSantis at crucial Pennsylvania rally since facing new charges. Heat alert. The pervading climate crisis worsens as massive heat waves are reported worldwide. Stellar stuns. Changcheng Air Show provides fans of military aviation a magnificent show as pilots wow spectators with heart formations in the sky. This is Adhaderana World News Tonight. Reporting from Colombo, here is Sanuvi Mudanayaka. Good evening and you are watching World News. Let's begin with our leading story for the day. A suicide bomber detonated explosives at a political rally in northwestern Pakistan, killing at least 44 people and wounding nearly 200. The blast took place at a gathering of the conservative Jayamant Ulema Islam Party on the outskirts of Kar in Pakistan's northwestern Bajar district, which borders Afghanistan. Hundreds arrived to hospitals in Pakistan's Bajor district. Many of those wounded in the terrorist attack and their relatives trying to comfort them and make sure that they're seen by doctors. The suicide bombing hit a gathering organized by the conservative Jamiyat Ulema Islam Party in the outskirts of Har, the Bajor district's capital, not far from the Afghan border. The site, located next to a market, was packed when the explosion rocked the area. I didn't know how and what exactly happened. I just saw a spark and heard a big bang. I was sitting close to the stage and our leadership was near the stage. After the blast, I saw hundreds of people lying on the ground and people started firing in the air, a lot of firing. The targeted party called for a thorough investigation into the bombing. We condemn today's blast and if in the future Jamiat workers will be targeted again, we will make sure we have our own security measures to protect ourselves. Several deadly attacks were carried out recently in Pakistan. In January, dozens were killed in a Peshawar mosque and police headquarters. The party targeted on Sunday said the latest attack is linked to elections due to take place in November. We now turn to Thailand where at least 12 people have been killed, including three children, in a blast at a fireworks warehouse in a market. The explosion in Shuang Kolok on the Malaysian border seriously injured at least 115 people and is have thought to have been caused by construction work. At least a dozen people were killed and over a hundred injured when firecrackers kept in a warehouse exploding in southern Thailand, an official said on Sunday. The incident occurred in the border town of Sunai Kolok in Nara Taiwat province. According to Nara Taiwat's governor, the incident took place on Saturday when the firecrackers set off a fire in an authorized warehouse at the Muna Market. The unauthorized warehouse blaze also damaged more than 200 nearby houses, affecting more than 350 people. An unidentified local resident was selling fish when the explosion happened and is still in shock. It went on for an hour before the explosion stopped. It was chaotic. We stuck to each other here and there. We didn't know what to do. Some have sought refuge at local shelters, with some staying there as they wait to return to their homes. Authorities are investigating the cause of the tragedy, with initial reports pointing to welding error at the warehouse. Campaigning in crucial northwest Pennsylvania, Donald Trump have familiar remarks amid a not-so-familiar path to 2024. Let's take a look. It's a great badge of honor because I'm being indicted for you. Former President Trump on the offense in Erie, Pennsylvania. All they're doing is hoping for massive election interference. It was his first rally since special counsel Jack Smith added new federal charges against him, including willful retention of national defense information and obstruction of justice. 
At the center of that charge, Carlos de Oliveira, a property manager at Mar-a-Lago, accused in the new indictment of telling another employee that the boss, referring to Trump, wanted the server deleted. De Oliveira is scheduled to make his first court appearance in Miami federal court tomorrow. Slightly further north this weekend, new barriers put around the Georgia courthouse at the center of his newest legal battle on election fraud. The Fulton County District Attorney signals a decision oh, could be near. Mm, we've been working for two and a half years. We're ready to go. Meanwhile, 2024 GOP contenders now beginning to tentatively bring up the charges against their lead rival, Mr. Trump. I don't think he's the right president at the right time going forward. Otherwise, we will have a general election that's doing nothing but dealing with lawsuits. Violence continues to escalate in the Russo-Ukrainian war as two skyscrapers in Moscow's premier business district have been damaged by drone strikes that sparkled a fireball and left charred holes in the side of the buildings in the latest attack on the Russian capital. These images circulating on social media show the moment one or two drones crashed in the business district of the Russian capital. It happened early on Sunday morning. We rented an apartment to come here and unwind. At one point, we heard an explosion. It was like a wave. Everyone jumped. And then there was a lot of smoke and fire from above. You couldn't see anything. The Russian authorities blamed Ukraine. They said they shot down one drone before it could reach the capital and brought down two others before they could hit their target crashing here in Moscow's International Business Center. It's not the first time that the Russian capital has been targeted. A drone attack on Monday damaged several buildings, one of them close to the headquarters of the defense ministry. The Russian authorities condemned what they dubbed a brazen act of terror and spoke of harsh retaliatory measures. At the time, Ukrainian Deputy Prime Minister Mikhail Fedorov promised there would be more drone strikes. Meanwhile, in Ukraine, Two people were killed in a Russian missile strike on the southern city of Zaporizhia on Saturday. It all happened in a second. The shrapnel hit the glass, it was all burned out, it flew over here and there. I'm fine, thank God. That was it, I hope. I guess I was just lucky. I was just sitting here, you know. Overnight, Another Russian missile strike killed at least one other person in the northeastern city of Sumy. Chaos and confusion continues in Niger following the coup that ousted the country's democratically elected president. West African nations have called for an immediate release of President Mohamed Bazoum in one week warning of a use of force if necessary. Last Wednesday, Niger's first democratically elected president, Mohamed Bazoum, was deposed by members of the country's military. With the country thrown into chaos, an emergency summit of the 15-nation economic community of West African states, ECOWAS, was held in Nigeria on Sunday. Describing the events as a hostage situation and an interruption to a properly elected government, ECOWAS demanded the immediate release and reinstatement of President Bazoum. The ECOWAS bloc not only suspended ties with Niger, but gave the military junta one week to cede power, warning that the use of force had been authorized. In the event the authorities' demands are not met within one week, take all measures necessary to restore constitutional order in the Republic of Niger. Such measures may include the use of force. ECOWAS and the eight-member West African Economic and Monetary Union have declared the closure of borders with Niger, which includes the banning of commercial flights, halting financial transactions, freezing national assets, and ending aid contributions. The military junta's ousting of the president in Niger marks the Sahel region's seventh coup in recent years. The people of Niger remain divided over the military takeover. There are those that stand behind President Bazoum, Niger's first ever democratically elected president, who came to power two years ago and is seen as one of the most pro-Western leaders in the Sahel, notably in the fight against Islamist insurgents. And then there are those in support of the coup, voicing discontent against France's interference in Niger's affairs, where, similar to events in neighboring Burkina Faso in September last year following a coup, protesters on the street were seen stomping on and burning French flags. 
These protesters also shouted support for Russian leader Vladimir Putin. These events coincided with a two-day Russia-Africa summit in St. Petersburg, during which the Russian president promised the shipment of free grain to six African nations as he searches for allies and support against Western sanctions. International organizations are monitoring the situation, with concerns growing that Niger will be added to a growing list of military regimes in West Africa. We're back with more world news after this short commercial break. Welcome back. Rishi Sunak is to set out details of the government's plans for the UK's fossil fuel and green industries. The Prime Minister will emphasize the need to strengthen Britain's energy security when he meets industry leaders. Energy security is national security, says the government, and the Prime Minister will this week meet industry leaders to strengthen support for homegrown energy and reduce imports. That could include controversial new licenses to drill for oil and gas in the North Sea and a plan in Scotland to capture the carbon dioxide produced by heavy industry and bury it deep underground to stop it adding to global warming. What we have to do is find ways to try to make the most of all the energy sources that we currently have. And for those that are really damaging to the uh, planet, we must make sure that we do whatever we can to mitigate those impacts. So what could that mean for the country's greenhouse gas emissions? The UK produced a total of 332 million tonnes of carbon dioxide in 2022. The Scottish Carbon Capture Scheme, along with two already approved in the north of England, would together bury 38 million tonnes of the greenhouse gas each year beneath the North Sea. But if the Rosebank oil field is approved, it's likely to produce 300 million barrels over its lifetime, which, if burnt, would result in around 129 million tonnes of carbon dioxide. The government is banking on a new generation of nuclear power stations to improve energy security, but the reactor at Hinkley Point C near Bristol is behind schedule and over budget, and plans for a new nuclear plant at Sizewell in Suffolk are still on the drawing board. Experts say they are a long shot. What you shouldn't be investing in is more uh, nuclear power stations, for instance, at Sizewell, or you shouldn't be investing in uh, more development of offshore oil and gas, neither of which can help us with the problems we've got to deal with at really fast in the next 15 years. Labour wants all the UK's electricity to come from zero carbon sources by 2030. But in the wake of the backlash over the ULES clean air measures in London, both government and opposition are reframing their green policies to keep voters on side. In fact, unprecedented heat waves have put the entire world on high alert. American companies are facing setbacks due to the extreme heat, while China's Xinjiang region even saw temperatures rise to 52 degrees Celsius. The intense heat wave globally has impacted countries in a number of ways. Over in the U.S., heat warnings and advisories have been issued throughout the country, affecting a large number of businesses. The state of Texas was particularly hard hit, as the average weekly working hours of workers in small and medium-sized businesses in the tourism, entertainment and recreation sectors plunged by about 20 percent from mid-June to mid-July, compared to the same period in 2019 to 2022. Analysts say that if the heat wave continues, Texas will face billions of dollars in economic losses. China has also seen volatile weather this summer. Some parts of China, including the Xinjiang region, has seen some of the most brutal summer heat in recent years, reporting temperatures as high as 52 degrees Celsius. China was also slammed by Typhoon Toksuri over the weekend, bringing heavy rainfall to several regions in northern China, including the capital Beijing. The massive storm has resulted in the evacuation of 400,000 people in the Fujian region, with China's weather authorities issuing a red alert for the first time in 12 years. Meanwhile, wildfires that have lasted now for more than two weeks in parts of Greece have impacted the tourism industry there. A total of 667 fires broke out across Greece in the past 10 days, an average of more than 60 fires per day. The wildfires this summer were all the more devastating for the country as they occurred during the peak of their summer vacation season. The island of Rhodes, known for its resorts, has been especially hit hard, 
with 20,000 vacationers evacuating the island earlier this month due to wildfires. With July 2023 already being recorded as the hottest month in human history by the World Meteorological Organization, and August still around the corner, concerns are high as to how much more damage the intense global heat will cause to people and the economy. No peace in sight for Palestinian refugees as officials confirm that at least six people have been killed and seven others wounded in clashes in Lebanon's largest Palestinian refugee camp near the southern port city of Sidon. Smoke could be seen rising from Lebanon's Ain al-Hilwa Palestinian refugee camp as the sound of gunfire and explosions rung out. Clashes between Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas's Fatah movement and rival Islamist groups killed several people and wounded dozens more. Among the dead was a Fatah commander. The violence has caused local residents to flee their homes and a hospital to be evacuated. For the safety of those in the hospital, we have decided to transfer them to nearby hospitals in Saida. The rest, we had five patients in intensive care. We moved them to nearby hospitals and to Jazeen Government Hospital. We still have a problem, which is the children in pediatric care. We have four children on breathing machines, so we are trying to see how we can get them out. Lebanon's Prime Minister called for an end to the violence. We urge the Palestinian leadership to cooperate with the army to control the security situation and deliver to the Lebanese authorities those who compromise it. The fighting erupted on Saturday after the failed assassination attempt on a leader of an Islamist group. A ceasefire failed to halt the violence. The impoverished camp in southern Lebanon is home to some 54,000 Palestinian refugees. It has gained notoriety for harboring extremists and has regularly seen deadly fighting between rival groups. Ain al-Hilwa is the largest of Lebanon's 12 Palestinian camps, which dates back to the 1948 Arab-Israeli war, and which mainly lie outside the authority of Lebanese security services. The Australian Defence Minister Richard Miles says the authorities have lost hope of finding alive the four missing crew members of an Australian Defence Force helicopter involved in a catastrophic crash during a training exercise. At first light, the search along the coastline and passages resumed, the desperation to find missing colleagues clear. But by midday, confirmation, there will be no rescue. Of the activities which are being undertaken in the Whitsundays have transferred from being ones of search and rescue to uh, an activity of recovery. Officials are now convinced Friday's crash was too swift and severe to survive. What you should take from what I have said today is that there was a catastrophic impact um, of the helicopter when it hit the water. That's, that's what occurred. There will be a, a full investigation. The Defence Minister himself made the call informing family of the four airmen. Warrant Officer Class 2 Joseph Phil Laycock, Lieutenant Maxwell Nugent, Troop Commander Captain Daniel Lyon and Corporal Alexander Nash. He's just one of the nicest blokes I've ever met. Federal MP Philip Thompson served with Alexander Nags at one RAR in Townsville. It was gut-wrenching, it was heartbreaking, it, it, it felt just like this absolutely devastating feeling and because we've got children whose fathers are missing, wives whose husbands are missing, mothers whose sons are missing. While some wreckage has been found, authorities are still searching for the mainframe of the aircraft and its data recording equipment. I'm not sure how long it will take. Uh, every appropriate resource and effort is being applied. Though the training exercise Talisman Sabre has slowly recommenced, officials are not scaling back the search. The nation's fleet of MRH-90 Taipans remains grounded and with their retirement expected next year, some experts are openly questioning whether they'll ever lift off again. These helicopters were certified to fly. Defence leaders are promising a full and frank investigation into the tragedy to answer the many deeply troubling questions that remain. Welcome back. For more news, let's take care on the world in a minute.
Holy ski mountaineer Andres Bagge made mountain in history when he became the first person to have sky down from the summits of the old Karakoram 8,000 meter mountains. Ukraine has started work to remove the Soviet hammer and sickle emblem from the motherland monument in Kiev. The old Soviet emblem will be replaced with the Trisab, the three-pronged emblem of Ukraine. An eyewitness captured a large landspout tornado sweeping through northeast Colorado, USA. The National Weather Service issued a tornado warning for the area and local media reported it was called off shortly after the tornado dissipated without causing major damage. Doxin, one of the strongest storms to hit China, caused a road to collapse in a village in Fangshan District, Beijing, as authorities warned residents not to go outside due to the record rainfall. Chelsea have agreed a deal to sign French defender Axel Assassin from League One Monaco. The 25-year-old is set to move to Stamford Bridge in a deal reported worth £45 million and will be another option to cover for injured compatriot Wesley for fun. That is all we have for you on World News Tonight. If you miss any of today's programs, you can always re-watch by watching us on YouTube channel youtube.com slash adadelna English. We leave you tonight with the sights captured from the spectacular air show in Shangshung, China that warped enthusiasts of military aviation. Thank you for watching. Good night. <laughs>